County Fair Cruise, and this week at Valley County in Ord. Coming up on Grow, change is coming to the supermarkets. Straight ahead, reaction to the passage of the national GMO labeling law. And concern from Nebraska growers who fear a popular weed killer could be banned. Plus horses, wild ones, and rodeo riding get ready to grow. The president signs a compromise deal on GMO labeling, those crops that dominate Nebraska's landscape. Nebraska farmers are watching closely. It's our top story. We have no problems if people want to want to consume organic food or non-GMO food. You know, that's a great thing about America. Brandon Honeycutt says consumers have options and soon genetically modified ingredients will be labeled. We want to be able to have a choice and, and provide what everybody wants. With Vermont set to enact its own GMO law, Congress reached a bipartisan deal now signed by the president and supported by farm groups. Our push was for a voluntary federal labeling and through discussions and compromise, uh, they came to a bill that provided the opportunity for GMO labeling, but through a process that the USDA will work with to develop the label on. The government has two years to work out the details. There may be exemptions for small food companies and technology may factor in, allowing people to scan a product to learn more. Yeah, we know there's some issues with that, with not everybody having smartphones, but you know, that, I think that's one of the key components is that we can put the information out there. And just because food is labeled, farmers want consumers to know that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. In fact, they point to study after study saying GMOs are safe. There's been billions of meals served um, with GMO products in it, and we don't have any known instances of people getting sick or having allergic reactions or anything of that, that nature. Some farmers fear it goes too far and may come across as a warning. While in the words of Senator Bernie Sanders, the legislation that passed is an outrage and speaks to the power of big money in American politics, end quotes. Farmers like Honeycutt hope the law finds middle ground. And hopefully the consumers will see the benefit in the future. Recent rain and cooler weather has helped crops and livestock. Some areas of central Nebraska got three inches and temps were two to four degrees below normal. That means less need to irrigate and less stress on livestock. The latest USDA report shows corn is mostly good, dough 25%, soybeans blooming 86% and setting pods around 43%. Detasseling is a rite of passage for many Nebraska teens and TV's Carmen Montes tagged along with the crew and has more. Uh, Jacobson. Yep. Cutters. Here. Waking up early, preparing their meals, and dressing for safety, not an easy task for some, but these scenes say it's something they look forward to. At the beginning, before it starts and when it's done, I love it. In the middle, it's not very fun. I mean, 440 is when I wake up usually every day. When they are out on the field, they walk between 15 to 20 miles a day, ending the season with worn out shoes. But crew leaders say it's an important part of the year, and the goal is making sure the corn is well cleaned. Uh, when it starts uh, pollinating, and it's such a small window that it has to be done, and being in agriculture, you know, you got to stay until the job is done. This crew is going through their second pull, taking out any tassels that might have been missed the first time around. So I think the first day, it took, took us like two and a half hours to go up, go up a, half, a quarter or a half mile field, which usually we should be able to do about 300 panels in about two and a half hours. So. The tasslers get paid by acres, so the more acres, the more money they earn. Average 13 year old kid, if you make between $700 and $1,100, you know, that's kind of the low end and the high end. You know, we have some kids, uh, last year we had a 20 year old kid that made $4,000 in 16 days. Last round, last round. As kids near the end of their final work day, you can tell they are exhausted, but they not only leave with a nice bonus, a great work ethic as well. We're lucky to have great kids with good work ethic that want to come out every day and put time in and actually work until the job is done. We're just very fortunate. For NTV News, Carmen Montes. With drought conditions worsening in some areas, the state's Hay Hotline is a resource you might want to check out. State Aid Director Greg Ibaugh encourages producers with hay surpluses or pasture for rent to register as a seller on the department's online hay and forage hotline. 
Ayabaugh says we have had an outstanding crop of alfalfa and prairie hay last year, and this year looks good too, but with drought setting in, some may be looking to buy. Even with the talk about vegetarians and vegan lifestyle, meat consumption posting the biggest gain in this country since the 70s. A new report from Rabobank calls it a momentous year. There was a 5% increase in per capita meat consumption, even with no gain in beef consumption. The report finds the next couple years will be significant for all protein markets due to strengthening of the dollar. The report called chickens, cows and pigs, oh my, also mentions that consumers can expect lower meat prices in the near future, especially in terms of beef and pork. And some changes in beef trade with Brazil. Following a multi-year process, USDA Food Safety concluded select Brazil meat plants now meet U.S. standards to export. The United States Cattlemen's Association worked for nearly a decade on this issue and says they're disappointed. The association states the safety of the U.S. domestic herd remains at stake given Brazil's ongoing FMD problem and continued bad acts within the international trade community. Taming wild horses right here in central Nebraska. NTV's Asia Aubrey went to Elm Creek to learn more. 30 acres filled with hundreds of wild horses and burros grazing in the field. We're kind of a resting spot stopover on their journey from the west to the east. The wild horse and burrow facility gets horses from across the west, places like California, Utah, and New Mexico. Also, they can be adopted. Continuously reproducing, and so there's a constant supply of animals that we need to remove from the range, and we uh, attempt to place them in private homes. The facility manager, Joe Strine, says workers don't interact with the animals much. We'll want to let them sort of be a horse and just have their own time, so when the stresses and movement happens, they're in as good a condition and fitness as they possibly can. These horses are not like your average horse. They may be somewhat approachable to humans, but they're not really ready to, you have to go home and work with them to make sure that progresses like a normal horse. In Elm Creek, Asia Aubrey, NTV News. Drag racers hit the tracks to drive home the benefits of using ethanol. Horsepower and RPMs were put to the test at Carney's Raceway Park. But instead of high octane race fuel, these cars were running on ethanol at the King of Corn Ethanol Nationals. Sponsors say the event is a way to put doubters of the fuel at ease, including some drivers who were skeptical coming in, having not put ethanol blend to the test before now, and that was about half the competitors. And the guys so far that have just came with no experience with it have all won. I mean, they've all been coming out with success. Are they as fast as where they want to be? Not yet, but you know what? This is their first time running the fuel, and they're picking up speed as, as every time they make a pass, they're getting faster and faster. Other drivers already made the switch and say this event is a way to prove a point. It perks up the ears of a lot of people that, well, man, I've, I've been running straight alcohol, or I've been running this custom mix fuel that costs $25, $30 a gallon, and these guys are out here doing it on corn. Promoters hope the event will continue to grow. Some call it the Major League of Rodeo, Kansas' biggest rodeo in Phillipsburg. That's where NTV's Melissa Newman went to check out the preparations for the big event. Benny Butler knows rodeos. It's in his blood. We've been coming to the rodeo here in Phillipsburg since I think my family, my family first. They started in the rodeo business, my granddad did in 1929. And then we've been coming to Phillipsburg ever since I was a little kid. Butler is in charge of producing Kansas's biggest rodeo, amongst many others. While he now stays behind the scenes. I found out pretty quick when I was young. I, I lit on my head more than I did my feet. So I always stayed on the first side of the business. He's confident in the caliber of talent that will be competing. What makes Phillipsburg sets it above all these other rodeos is the contestants they have. I know we got the rides. We got Sterling Crowley. He's world's champion. We've got all the time to bench world's champion, so it'll be, a, it'll be a good show. With a stacked roster, Butler and other rodeo organizers are now making sure all of the animals are in the best possible shape. So these animals, bulls and horses, are bred to buck. That's what they do just like breeding racehorses, and they like to buck. And, and they're ornery and they're mean, and you've got to handle them, and they're worth a lot of money, so you treat them with kids' gloves because they're... Oh, they've had some bucking horses that bring over 100,000 a head. And the bulls, they'll, they'll give up to 250,000 for a great bull. 
Butler says the animals spend more time in the pasture than in the arena. So most of those horses are about 10 or 12 times the whole year, and that's eight seconds. So I'd like to have a job like that, and you would too. <laughs> Putting together Kansas's biggest rodeo might be a lot of work, but Butler says it's all worth it. You get to know everybody, so it's like going home, yeah. Growers raise concerns that a popular weed killer could be banned. Our Grow interview is up next.